All right, welcome back. We are doing more proofs. And so um, if you think about what proofs actually are, proofs are like the logical reasoning that you could use to kind of like help someone understand your point of view or why you're right, why maybe they're a little bit wrong or a lot wrong, or why you see their point of view. Okay. All right. So um, this is funny. You guys are cracking me up over here. All right. So um, here's your jump start. It says, given a conditional statement. So a conditional statement, again, means if, then. Okay. There's Maybe there's an implied then, but there's a then somewhere in there. So if it's raining, the sidewalks are wet. So last night um, near my house, it rained. <clears throat> and, or no, was it this morning? It was this morning. Um, this morning it was raining and then I looked out and I could tell because the sidewalks were wet. It was really dark outside. So it, they want you to write the converse of the statement. So the word converse means to switch. So can you practice writing this converse of the statement? Write the converse. You should start by writing if something and then I like then because then it makes sense. So if something, then something. All right, so what would the if be? If what, then what? So this is what I do. This blue part is gonna go here. So this is literally what I mean by switch. The orange part is gonna go here. Does that make sense? So we can use an if statement, right? For the ones that you guys said earlier, right? So if the sidewalks are wet, oh, it didn't even make it blue. That's so sad. All right, then it was raining or it is raining. If the sidewalks are wet, then it is raining. How about that? It is raining. All right. Everybody okay with that? Is this true? If it's raining, the sidewalks are wet. That's true. Okay. Is this necessarily true? If the sidewalks are wet, then it is raining. Is it? Is that always true? Yeah, no. You, like think about a couple of different like scenarios where this could be true, right? It could be the sprinklers. Exactly. It could be wet from like, I don't know, you washing your car. It could be wet from the fact that you guys are, I don't know, using super soakers or what are those called? Super soakers? I think they're called super soakers. Whatever. Some kind of super soaking fight or hose fight or water guns. Exactly. Um, you're watering the plants. Exactly. All of those are legit statements. Just because you write a statement doesn't mean it's true. Okay. So just because the conditional statement is true doesn't mean the converse is true. Everybody get on that? All right. So today you'll be able to um, practice translating proof ideas into written formats. So um, not necessarily, but the whole point of this is not necessarily proving that it's true. It's just know that when you write a statement, the reverse is not necessarily true. The converse is not necessarily true, right? So if Let's just say, like, remember we were talking about, you know, like lemons and stuff. So, like, if, if, I don't know, let's see, if you have flowers, then you stole them. And then switching it, if you stole flowers, then you had them, doesn't necessarily mean either one is true. It's just a statement, right? The truth or the, the validity of that statement it doesn't necessarily tie to the converse of that statement. 
So um, what do I need to attend to when writing a formal proof? What format should I use? Narrative, flow, two column? How does each format support my thinking? What understanding might I draw upon? Rigid transformation, tri triangle congruence, algebra, like what makes the most sense? I'll tell you right now, um, everyone has their own preference. So if you've never written a proof, maybe you like narrative paragraphs because that's what you're used to writing. When you're writing, paragraphs make sense. Um, flow diagrams could also make sense, depends on how you think. So we're gonna show you a couple of different ones of these today and then see which ones you like. And then you're gonna make sure that you're pretty sufficient on all of them. So um, the diagram from how do you know that, remember the previous lesson, has been extended by repeating the rotating and, oh wait, by repeatedly rotating the images, um, the image triangles around the midpoints of their sides to form a tessellation of the plane as shown. So here, right, you take this and you've uh, rotated it about its um, midpoint. Using this diagram, you have made some conjectures about lines and angles, triangles, and this task, you will write proofs to convince yourself and others that these conjectures are always true. So once you prove something is true, you don't have to prove it true anymore, okay? So for each of the following proofs, you may use any format you choose, um, a flow, a two column, a narrative, or an algebraic proof. So here we're gonna prove that, um, we're gonna look at these vertical angles. Do you guys remember vertical angles? Yes, they're opposite of each other. So this angle here, BEC and AED. So it says, when two lines intersect, the opposite angles formed at the point of intersection are called vertical angles. So angle one and angle two are vertical angles. In the diagram AEB and CED, so these ones here, AEB and CED form a pair of vertical angles because they're opposite each other. So here's what you're gonna have to prove. Given that AC and BD intersect at E, given that AC and BD intersect at E, prove that AEB is congruent. So this angle here is congruent to this angle here, okay? So before we even start, we're going to just list out all the things that we know. What do you notice? So I'm going to actually go to my, my this because it's way confusing. Um, um, because I want to be able to write as much as you guys tell me. Okay, so looking at that picture, what's one of the first things that you notice? What do you notice about that picture? Yes, there's four angles. Very good. We don't really have interior angles in this case because, um, I don't know, the, there's nothing inside of them, if that makes sense. All right. so. So start listing it out while I start typing it out so that you guys can see what we see. So I need you to say all the most obvious things. So you see four angles, good. Anybody else? So the thing that you're like thinking like, I don't need to say that that's so obvious. Say it, very good. I see two intersecting lines, intersecting lines, good. Um, if you connected some more things, yeah, I'd see some triangles. I'm not gonna write that one down. I'm just going off of the picture that I see right in front of me. Just this picture, I don't see a triangle, so I'm not gonna write that. If you connect points, then yeah, so I'm not gonna write that. The bottom angle has no points, but the top right, and left have letter points. Oh, okay, so so this is probably a good thing to talk about. This point A here is this is this point right here. Where they put that letter just depends on wherever it lands. So they could have taken A and written it down here if they wanted. Does that make sense? So um, there's five points. Okay. What else? 
Um, I see possible right angles, yes, but because they're not labeled, you can't assume. So we can't assume that those are right angles. Anything else? This is a pretty good list. So off of this list, oh, E is the point in the middle. I like that. E is the, I'm going to call it the point of intersection. And someone else said vertical angles. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to use this to actually prove it. Okay. So we have, we have angles. Does anybody, so, so here's what I really want. Because I'm so good at algebra, I want to assign numbers or angles or like, I want to bring numbers into this picture. So far, you've given me no like numbers that I can actually like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. AEP, AED is similar to BEC. Actually, yeah, we're actually going to prove that those two are going to be congruent, right? So does anybody see it? What numbers do you know about this picture? Yeah. All right. Okay. You need to put that in the public. Both of you who put the, the numbers, put that to the public chat. Yeah. They, they, we, that's exactly what we're going to do. Someone said, I was about to say that they're congruent. Um, oh, that they aren't congruent. Oh, that's funny. Very good. So we have people saying in the public, 180. Okay. Where do you see 180 in this picture? So you are right. So I'm going to write 180 in here. But where do you see it? Very good. So any line at like the measures of a straight angle will add up to 180. So the angles will add up to 180 or it is 180. So I'll draw like this, this is what I'll draw, draw for you. Hold on. So I'll draw something like this. Do you guys all see that? So from here to here, like I always think about this as a book. Do you guys all see like pretend this book is closed and I open it all the way up and now the book is lying flat on the table. That's 180 degrees. Okay. Very good. Someone said the angle AEC is 180 degrees. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> so now that I have 180 degrees, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable because now I know that I can prove this right? Do you see any other 180 degrees? Do you see any other 180 degrees in this picture? Oh, someone said it already. Sorry. So AEC, yes. And someone else said BED, perfect. I should be writing this down, Miss Johnson. You're saying such good things. Okay. So I'll, catch, I'll capture that in a second. And then, so this guy here is also 180 degrees. Everybody okay with that? You guys all see this? Yes? Okay. Does anybody see anything interesting about these two 180 degrees that we wrote? Anybody see anything interesting? Anybody see anything interesting? Everything is legit, by the way. Don't think, oh, I, I shouldn't say that because that's a dumb thing. No, nothing is dumb. Okay. Yes, they overlap. Woohoo! Two people said that. Very good. If you noticed that they overlapped, then you're pretty much done. Okay. So I am going to label the angles with numbers because then it's going to make my life just a little bit easier. Okay. So I'm going to label um, this angle one and then this angle in here two and then this angle over here three. So when I label an angle with a number, it's just going to let it be faster for me to like write this out. So I don't have to go like this. 
angle A, E, B. I could just say angle one. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so I'm pretty much done in, in terms of proving. I just have to show you what I'm actually going to prove. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to use the numbers. I don't know if you guys can see that. So let me just write this again. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. Can you write me a couple of equations based on angles one, two, and or three using some of the information that we have just in this picture? Okay, can you write me a couple of equations, exactly two? That's what I really want. I want two equations that have to do with this picture here. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think. Um, I, I'm not thinking of 90 plus 90 equals 180 specifically because we don't know that these angles um, are 90 degrees because it doesn't say it. So I need it to be an equation. So something equals something else. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to pause. You guys are going to think about it, and we'll be back. So one of the hints that we gave was, okay, if I wanted to write an equation, I want to talk about this blue, this darker blue 180. So if it's equal to 180, what's the other side equal to? And a lot of you came up with um, a couple of different ways to write it, so I'm going to snip the pictures as proof that I'm not making stuff up. I have this feeling, this random feeling sometimes when you guys only private chat me that you guys think like, Miss Johnson, are you making stuff up right now? Like, are you pretending? My answer is no. Okay, so here's what one person said. They said, measure of angle one um, plus measure of angle two equals to 180. So in this case, yes, but ignore, like scratch out this 90 because we're not, um, we don't know that it's 90. So I'm gonna scratch that out. So I'm gonna put this on this side. Uh oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Let's make it a little smaller. Scoot it over. Now, some of you um, didn't use the measure of angle one and angle two. You used, yeah, you used the letters, which is also okay. So I wanted to show you that. And then we'll talk about semantics, meaning like, um, what you write. Okay, so here I'm going to show you a couple things. This person wrote an M, measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180. The difference between writing measures and the angles is the angles is talking about the physical object. Like this would be like you. Like, I don't know, this would be one of you guys. So maybe it's John or something, right? Measure of angle one, talking about John, right, would be considered like his age or his height, or, you know, what grade he's in, like some measure of John, you know, the grade that he has in science class or whatever the case might be. So we always want to use whenever we're adding or subtracting or saying equals to, we always want to use measure. If you do not put this for the first couple of tests, no big deal. But I will hold you to it eventually. So make sure that you're comfortable with writing measure of angle. And I'm going to consistently say it so it's like, like you're used to it. Just like you're used to using Desmos now because you've used it so much. So <clears throat> essentially, these two statements are saying the same thing, Ms. Johnson. Yeah. Which one do you like better? <clears throat> using the letters or the numbers? Great. Use that way. I don't really care which one you use. It's, it's actually just preference. Um, just for the sake of me writing faster, I like this way better. That's the only reason why I like this better. Okay, so here's one equation. And then I wanted you to write another equation saying equals to 180 as well. So some of you already wrote that. So I'm going to just copy it again. So equals to 180. Some of you wrote measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. Some of you wrote BEC plus CED. So I'm going to write that down. I'll use measure of angle two plus measure of angle three. And you guys could have also used the angle, the, the letters, whichever one you want to use. Again, do it. Just make sure that when you're using the letters, um, the middle letter is your vertex, meaning the corner of that angle. Otherwise, 
you're using you're not talking about the same angle you think you are so far so good yes okay so now I want to talk about the fact that you have some overlap. Where do you see the overlap here? There's two overlaps that I see. Algebraically, so over here, you said, Ms. Johnson, they overlap. Over here, do you see them overlapping? Who is overlapping here? Very good. So we see angle two is overlapping with angle two. Very good. Very good. And some of you even noticed that 180 is overlapping 180. Do you see how 180 overlaps with 180? Okay. Algebraically, what does that mean, Miss Johnson? This is that same thing that I was telling you. I don't know. I get so confused on which class I tell what. So if I've told you this, I apologize. If I haven't, good. Or if, even if I told you over again. Yeah, we are proving that they're congruent. So look at, check this out. The, I'm going to pretend that this is Mrs. Johnson. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is Ms. Johnson. So this is Johnson. And this is you. Okay. So... Mrs. Johnson and you have the same amount of money. Everybody okay with that? So again, 180 is you. You have the same amount of money as, I don't know, your BFF. So again, Ms. Johnson has the same amount of money as you do. And you have the same amount of money as your best friend. What else do you know? What's the next logical statement that we can write? What's the next logical statement we can make? Not the total. So I'm going to say it again. So ignore this. Don't even look at this. Like, look at my face. So here's Mrs. Johnson. Um, she's going to draw herself. Oh my gosh, Miss Johnson. You guys have no idea. Like, I'm such a good drawer. Look, I'm bald right now. Boom, I've got hair. Yay. Yeah, that's exactly it, Jacob. Yay. Okay. So here's Miss Johnson. She has money. She really doesn't have a lot of money, but let's just pretend. Okay. And then here's you. We're going to make you dark blue. Uh, maybe you're taller. I don't know. Miss Johnson's pretty short. Okay. Here's you. I don't know. This is the generic you. So if you're a girl, put cute hair on you. We don't even have eyeballs and faces. We're good. So here's you. So this is Mrs. J. This is you. And then here's your best friend. So your best friend is maybe she's, I don't know. Whenever people draw like this, this is, this makes me laugh. Apparently I just have a skirt. Okay. Here's your BFF. Okay. So Mrs. Johnson has some money and it's the same amount as you. You have the same amount as your best friend. No, I didn't. And then what does that mean about Mrs. Johnson? What's the next logical statement? I've got one. Yes, I got two people. I got two people who got it. So I'm going to say it again. Mrs. Johnson and you have the same amount of money. You and your BFF have the same amount of money. Yes, that means all of us have the same amount of money. Specifically, me and your BFF have the same amount of money. Yay. Okay. That's, um, that's syllogism. Syllogism. I'm going to say that again. That's syllogism, right? Syllogism is this idea that you can grab logical statements based on the information that you get. If that makes sense to you, you should probably think about doing any of these like logical tasks, lawyers, engineers. I'm thinking about more people like like you have information in front of you and the information in front of you will actually make a picture and a solution for whatever problem you're considering. So detectives have to do this. Lawyers have to do this. Um, investigators have to do this. I don't know me as a mom and as a teacher, I do this all the time. 
like, hmm, you are not looking at me. You are looking off and to the side. I wonder if you are texting. So kind of like that. Okay. So what I want to go back over here is now we can write the logical statement. So if Mrs. Johnson, I'm going to now talk about measure of angle one. If measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180 and measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180, what's the next logical statement we can make? What's the next logical statement we can make? Oh. So use the, the whole thing that you guys said over here about me and whatever. But specifically who? Yes, they're all the same, but specifically, what, no, not that statement. Specifically who had, what was the next logical statement? So if Mrs. Johnson and you have the same amount of money and you and your best friends have the same amount of money, what is it, the very next statement is me and, me and who? Now look at this statement. You guys said they're all the same. Who can we technically take out of the picture here? Who can we technically take out of the picture? If, yeah, the middle dude, why? <laughs> why can we take out the middle dude? Yes, the you, why can we take out the middle guy, right? So I'm going to highlight him. We didn't take him out. We didn't nothing him, but we can technically take him out because our logical, our next logical statement is I, Mrs. Johnson has the same amount of money as your best friend. Doesn't that make sense? So now we can write that same similar statement here for funsies. <laughs> so what statement would we now write is so if Miss Johnson, who's the middle guy in this case, who's the middle man in this case? Yes, very good. In this case, it's 180. So I'm going to take these two out and set these two together. So see if this makes sense to you. So measure, oops, I'm in the wrong font here. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals measure of angle two plus measure of angle three. Why can you do that, Miss Johnson? Because this was the blue 180 degrees, which is equal to this one, which was the lighter blue 180 degrees. Doesn't that make sense? So we said that if Miss Johnson has the same amount of money as you, and you have the same amount of money as your best friend, that means that me and your best friend have the same amount of money. We could set them equal to each other. So take a second and see if this logically makes sense. Don't just copy it. I'm super uninterested in you copying my work. I'm super interested in you like, okay, wait, that totally makes sense because, and then articulate some kind of sentence. That makes sense because of the middle dude. We don't need him anymore, right? Because he's, I don't know, you guys all said he's it's just there for fun. Someone else described it like this and I liked it. So it's almost like the beginning and the end, we could set those two things together. So see how we went in this loop here. So Johnson, you, you, best friend. So Miss Johnson and best friend. So someone already has the next statement, which is really, really neat, right? Really, really neat. So d does anybody, can anybody articulate why this makes sense? For this one right here? So what I did is I took, um, let me highlight things so that maybe it'll make more sense. I took this um, pink statement and set it equal to the yellow statement because this pink equals this yellow. So I took this measure of angle one plus measure of angle two which equals to 180. And I took measure of angle two equals measure of angle three because that equals to 180 and I set them equal to each other. Very good, very good. Okay, looking at the statement, what's the, what do you notice about this statement here? What do you notice about this statement here? Mm. 
Yes. Very good. Someone said, Ms. Johnson, I see two twos. Very good. So what should we do? We should subtract them, right? So I'm going to subtract measure of angle two and measure of angle two. And what's going to happen? Ms. Johnson, you could subtract measure of angle two. Yeah. So what you don't know is measure of angle two is some number that I haven't told you yet. Exactly. Someone said, that's going to be zero, Ms. Johnson. Yeah. So this is going to be a big fat zero. This is going to be a big fat zero, right? So what's left? What's left? Yes, very good. Measure of angle one equals measure of angle three. So you're saying, Ms. Johnson, this angle is equal to this angle? Yes. And that's what we just proved. So we just proved that this is true. Okay. Look at this and say, this is where I'm going to mess up on the test. If you give me the same exact question on a test, Ms. Johnson, I'm going to mess up on this part. What part is that? Was writing the equations kind of tricky? I don't think so. You guys saw that. And then writing the equation, that was tricky. The, I think the part for me that um, I get, I see students struggling in is they have this, but they don't see the, the overlapping. That's why I keep asking, okay, well, now what do you see? Right? And so someone said, I see the twos, Ms. Johnson. The twos are the same, right? And that's so important because once you see that the twos are the same, then you can subtract them. Once you see the 180s are the same, then you can set them equal to each other. Okay. Yeah. Will you always, someone asked a really good question. Should you, will we always have to subtract if we have the same thing on both sides? Yeah. Because you're trying to make this thing as simple as possible. And in fact, here we were trying to prove, um, actually we were trying to prove it here, that AEB is congruent to CED, right? And we did that. Poor middle dude. I know, right? I know. But you know what? Without the middle dude, we couldn't write this statement. So he's not unimportant. He's just, you know, not there. Okay. So what I want to go in now and do is whenever you're writing a proof, you always have to write the reasons why. So here we're done with this proof. Now I want to tell you why you should do it. So when you guys wrote this, how did you know this? How did you know that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals to one idea? How did you know that? How did you guys know that? How did we know measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180? What did you guys see here? Yes, very good. Someone called them supplementary angles. Some people can call them a linear pair. I'm gonna write both. So the reason for this one is gonna be, I need to write this in this highlighted. So here's my reasons. So, um, oops. So we're going to write definition of linear pair or supplementary angles. I, I prefer linear pair because it means that I see a line and you would see a line too, right? Do you all see the line? Yeah. So done. So both of these is because it's a definition of a linear pair. Is this okay? So now I need to say, okay, well, how, why did you, what, what, what made you do this one? Measure of angle one plus measure of angle two. How do you know that that's true? What did we do? What is this? Anybody know what this is called? Oh no, I'm stuck. Sorry, my, my one note was stuck for a second. How did you know that that was true? What made us say measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals measure of angle two plus measure of angle three? What was that called? Anybody know what we did there? Anybody know? It starts with an S. Hmm. 
no. What's the rest of this word? <laughs> Someone just wrote in the chat. Simigal. <laughs> just for fun. Exactly. No, substitution. Um, I, People say different things. Some people say substitution. Some people say transitive property. Um, either way is okay. Um, the reason why it's either one of those reasons is because I substituted this in for 180, right? I substituted this in for 180. Okay. I like semigle. Semigle. So um, transitive property goes like this. If um, this is part of the transitive property when we were talking about if I have the same amount of money that you do and you have the same amount of money that your your best friend does, therefore I have the same amount of money that your friend does. So transitive property kind of looks like this. So let me go, um, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So do you see your, do you see you, me, you, your best friend, Therefore, me and your best friend. Kind of thing. Okay. Um, what did you guys do here? What was this? What would, what did you guys do here? What is this called? What did you do to both sides? Yeah, hey, you subtracted. So that's called the subtraction property of equality. Ms. Jonathan, why is it called that? If you write subtraction, I am good. I have to give you the correct names because I am your teacher. So it's the subtraction property of equality, meaning you did it to both sides. All right. Very good. All right. So the last, the very, very last statement I would make here is I would say that angle one, now this is going to be a weird statement and you guys are going to be like, why did you have to say that? So angle one is now congruent to angle three. So here we're saying that numbers are equal. Here we're saying that angles are congruent. And you can go, you can use the definition. This one's just going to be the definition of congruence or congruent. Is that okay? So writing proofs just goes like this. What do you see? Okay, so like this is what you guys told me you see. I picked one of these, I picked the lines and I said, I wish I had numbers. And then someone said, I said, do you see any numbers here? And then someone said, 180, Miss Johnson. So I drew in 180. I said, do you see any other 180s? And then someone said, this 180. And I said, oh, okay. I said, can you write me some equations? And then some of you were like, yeah, I can write you some equations. And then you wrote it. So when you're writing a proof, this is not really a very neat proof. I'll show you a better version of this proof later. But when you're writing a proof, you're just saying what you see. And now that you see this, now what do you know? And now that you know this, now what do you know? Does that make sense? All right. So we're going to do this one. So do you guys remember the exterior angles of a triangle? Remember, we talked about this. Exterior means outside. Right? Okay. So we want to prove, I don't know why the thing is down here and this is up here. So I'm going to try to make this one bit smaller. So it says... When a side of a triangle is extended in the diagram below, the angle formed on the exterior angle is called the exterior angle. The two angles um, that are not adjacent, so not next to, are called the remote interior angles of the diagram. So um, then it's asking you, can you prove that measure of angle four is equal to measure of angle one plus measure of angle two? We've kind of already proved this. So I'm going to have you guys start on this and see how far you can get. Okay. So what I need you to start with is an equation. So I have no equations here. And then all of a sudden at the very end, I have an equation. 
shoot. So do you see any equations in this picture? First, I want you to write it down. I'm gonna give you a hint. You should see two different equations, two of them, okay? All right, some of you already, very good. That's one of the equations. Some of you already figured out a couple of your equations. The first equation that should have popped out to you, if it didn't, just you need to be comfortable with writing or with, what should I say? You need to be a little bit more comfortable looking at this and saying, where are my equations, right? Or where who's equal to what, right? So here I see another 180. That was my first equation that I saw. You guys all see this? Now that you know that, what equation can you write, right? So this one I put together. And the next one that I saw was, um, this is a triangle and a triangle's angles always add up to 180. So those are the two equations that I, I, I'm gonna write right now. So don't forget your M's. If you wrote your M's, I'm looking at a lot of you type it in the chat. You guys are doing a great job on that. So get very good. So measure of angle three plus measure of angle four equals to 180. Okay, and then the next one I'm doing is measure of angle one plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180, okay? Okay, if you didn't see, whichever one you didn't see, like get that one in your head. Like whenever I see a, like let's say you didn't see the triangle one, get that one in your head. Like whenever I see a triangle, angles add up to 180. So boom, 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 you have to add up to 180, okay? Is everybody comfortable with where I got these two? Okay, good. What's the next step? What do you think the next step is going to be? Does anybody see anything familiar to the, what they what we've seen in the past? In the past being like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, what would the next step be? What do you guys see? Anybody see anything here? Yes, but not yet. What happened? What has to happen first? You guys see this? Does this look familiar to anything? Doesn't this? This reminds me of this right here. Right? Because they're both equal to 180. So what was our next step? What did we do? Yeah, we put them together. So I'm going to do this again with the pink and the yellow. So here's my pink equation. Here's my yellow equation. Because they both equal to 180, I'm going to take my pink equation and set it equal to my yellow equation. Does that make sense? So measure of angle three plus measure of angle four equals measure of angle one plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle three. Do you guys all see this? Yes. Put these equations together. Very good. Is this okay? Is everybody okay with this? This is more of the same of what we just did. Okay, now what do you see? Anybody see what you see? Remember, this is our finish line over here. I want four equals to one plus two. Yes, very good. Who saw that these both had threes in it? Very good. So subtract, oops, subtract, oops. Subtract measure of angle three, right? So then what is left? What's left on the pink side and what's left on the yellow side? What do we got? Very good. Very good. Very good. Done. So you finished this off because you were done. So someone said, Ms. Johnson, the only thing that's left is measure of angle four equals to measure of angle one plus measure of angle two. So notice that's exactly the line here. This is gonna be your finish line every single time. Prove, I'm done. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go through the statements. Why could I write this statement, measure of angle three plus measure of angle four equals 180? What's the, what's the rule that allows me to write that? What did we say? Does anybody remember what we wrote up here? Why we can write measure of angle three plus measure of angle four equals 180? Yes. So this is so technically this is this is going to sound weird. The answer is right here. They gave you the answer. Your job is to go from beginning to end and to end where their answer is. Does that make sense? Who remembers up here what we wrote up here about why we could write measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4? What did we say? I'll give you a hint. It started with definition of Come on, y'all. No. Go look again. Come on. Why could we write measure of angle three plus measure of angle four? Where is that here? Yes, linear pair. Very good. Why is it linear pair? Why is it linear pair? Because it makes a, what word do you see in linear? Yeah, it makes a line. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that? Very good. All right, moving on. Why could we write state this statement right here? Measure of angle one plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle three. What do you know? Is it a true statement? That one's not up there, but it should make sense. A lot of you actually found that equation. How did you know that? What do you know about that? Come on, y'all. Just put it. Very good. Someone said, because the, ang the three angles of a triangle equal to 180. Perfect. I am going to snip that because that is correct. Now, if you want the formal words for it, like um, some teachers are very formal, like you have to write it the way it's it's like named in math. But the problem with that is every textbook has a different name for everything. So that's the reason for that. If you want the formal name for it, the more formal name is like triangle sum theorem or something like that. Every single book has a different name so that I'm not going to make you write them. All right, next line. How can we can write this? If you're feeling uncomfortable right now, you're right in the place where you're supposed to be. If you're like, I don't get this, good. Go look where this makes sense. No, not for this one. For this one, yes, because the last answer said congruence. See, that wasn't our final answer. Your last line needs to look like your last line. Um, I replaced one with A, E, B and stuff like that, though. For this one, we don't, because this one doesn't have an e a congruent sign. Very good, very good. This is substitution, very good. Um, you can also have written um, transitive property. Okay. What did we do here? What's the last step? Yep, we subtracted. Also called the subtraction property of equality. Okay, so I think this one, you guys are getting better at it, right? So just be comfortable with some of these words because some of you are like, uh, yeah, we don't need congruence in this one, right? Look at this. Is there congruent here? No. So we don't write congruence, right? All right, let's move on. So notice here, all day long, we're just doing we're just doing proofs over and over and over again. Okay, so this one says, given BF is parallel to AD, prove that angle one is congruent to angle five. Prove that angle one is congruent to angle five. 
Look for angle one. Look for angle five. Okay, so I need you to start with, okay, what do you see? Yeah, I see the same thing too. So can you pretend, actually, I, can, I can't do this. Oh, I can kind of do this. So can you pretend that I'm tracing this? And I'm a really good tracer, okay? Let's pretend I'm a really good tracer. And I'm going to trace... Um, I'm going to translate this. Oh, I'm not a very good tracer. Hold on. I messed up. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but I traced it in light blue. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to translate it down here. Do you notice anything? I'm going to be on number three, so I don't know what, when that corresponds to. What do you guys notice when I did that? Do you guys all see what I did? When I did that, what happens? When I traced it from here and I dragged it to here, what happened? Yeah, it's a translation. It's congruent. It's like a copy. Do you guys all see that? Do you guys get like tracing paper? So I'm not going to write this proof for you because I want to move on. So now you know corresponding angles are congruent. Kind of, but more of a translation. So now you know angles one and angle five are congruent. Okay, we proved, not really, but let's just pretend that we proved angles one and angle five congruent. So I'm going to mark that congruent on my, on my, Thing. So remember, whenever I mark things congruent, I just use a little arc mark, and that's how I prove that they're congruent, okay? Or I show that they're congruent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove, I should just cut this picture so that you guys can see it, so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth. So I'm going to, I now want to prove, right? I now want to prove alternate interior angles three and six are congruent. So I want to prove, this is in pink. I want to prove that pink is congruent to pink. I want to prove three is congruent to six. Ms. Johnson, do we know that one is congruent to five? Yeah, because we just proved it. Okay. Oops, I didn't draw on the right picture. That's why it's not showing up. I want to prove pink is congruent to pink. Does anybody see anything for this for this pink one? Your brain should kind of be hurting. Because you guys are thinking a lot. Okay. So knowing that BF is parallel to AD. So this guy is parallel to this guy, right? Can you prove that angle three is congruent to angle six? What do you see? I would start off with the angle one is congruent to angle five. That's what I would start off with. But Ms. Johnson, we don't know that. We do because we proved it up here. Now that you know that, now you can always use corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start there. Okay. What else do you see? Remember, you're always look. I mean... For now, you're you're looking for equations because that's what you're the most comfortable with. Does anybody see any equations? Does anybody see any equations? Mm -hmm. 
No, we don't put an M. Anybody see why we don't put an M here? Because I'm using the congruent symbol. So I don't use measure of angle one and angle five. Very good question, by the way, because, because we're using congruence. Very good. So someone already found me an equation, but I want equations Yes, it's not a triangle. You're right. So can you look at, can you use the angles that have markings on it? Like someone told me one, angle one plus angle two is equal to 180. I don't want that. I want to use angles that are marked up. You should be able to give me two different equations. Find me two different equations that equal to, or that are equations. Okay, so one of the equations that someone just found was measure of angle one plus measure of angle three equals 180. So that's one of your equations, right? Find me another one like that. Now here's the thing, I want you to use the angles that are marked up. Don't just pick angles. Because there's going to be a lot of equations, like you can write 7 plus 8. But I don't want you to talk about 7 plus 8. I really want you to talk about the angles that are marked up. Does that make sense? So person who said measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 4, that is true. It's equal to 180, but not so interested in it. Someone said measure of angle 5 plus measure of angle 7 equals 180, but I'm not interested in it. I need the angles that are marked up. So I'm going to kind of be your guide. Like you, like normally you won't have me, like you have to write these proofs on your own. So I'm going to be your guide and I'm going to say, yeah, but that's not so helpful because I, like your, your goal is to get to three and six. <gasps> Ms. Johnson, I have a three right here. I know. So that means I need an equation with angle what in it. So I'm going to pause again so you guys can figure that out. So the other equation that I wanted you to write, the hints were, number one, I want you to use something with measure of angle six. So I wanted an equation with measure of angle six in it. Because if I'm going to go over here and I'm proving that, wait, where am I? Three and six are equal, right? Or measure of angle three and measure of angle six are equal, then I need an equation with angle six in it. Very good. Very good. So Here's six, what else do I know? Now, some people wrote like six plus measure of angle six plus measure of angle eight equals 180, that's okay. But eight is now like the new guy. Now I need another equation with eight to bring him in the loop of all these other equations that I got going on, right? Yeah, that's right, perfect. So the equation that I was hoping that you guys would write is measure of angle five plus measure of angle six equals 180. Now take a look. Why does that make sense? No, that's okay. Yes, exactly. Five and six. I, I wanted you to loop those two together. Perfect. So the reason why <clears throat> I wanted you to loop those two together is because I'm, I already have a five. I don't have a six, right? If you looped eight in the mix, now I have a new equation that I have to bring in another equation that loops eight in the mix. Does that make sense? Okay, now you should be really comfortable with this. What comes next? What comes next? Look at my statements. What's the logical statement next? Look, if you look at all three of the, this is our third proof with it. If you look at all three of these, we have this statement. And then all of a sudden we write another statement based on the statements that we have. See? We did it up here too. Right? Yes, very good. Set those bad boys equal to each other. That's exactly what we're going to do. Right? We're going to do this, oops, 
we're going to do this pink and the yellow thing again, right? Pink, yellow, and then we have a yellow side, and then we're going to have a pink side. So go ahead and write that out while I write it out. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle three equals measure of angle five plus measure of angle six. Now this one's a little bit different, so pay attention. I have like another minute to do this. Just want to make sure. So this sentence should make sense because I don't know if you noticed, but we, yeah, there's no repeated number in this one, but wait, there's more, right? So if you noticed in all the proofs that we've been doing, we have like this equation equals to 180, this equation equals to 180, and then we set them equal to each other, right? So now, and then we had this thing where we had the same number on both sides, so we subtracted them both. In this case, we don't have that. But anybody notice this guy up here? What does this mean? If measure of angle, I mean, sorry, if angle one is congruent to angle five, what does that imply about their measures? What does that mean about their measures? Mm -mm. Well, yes, we know that they're parallel lines, but check this out. Don't you know this? If we know that they're congruent, we know that their measures are equal. Does that make sense? Measure of angle one equals measure of angle five. You guys all see that? So that means whatever one is, five is. So essentially these two are the same number, right? These two are the same number. If you want, you can um, copy the same exact thing, but instead of putting angle one here, you could put angle five because look, they're the same thing. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to write this for you. So measure of angle five plus measure of angle three equals measure of angle five plus measure of angle six. I know that I could do this because measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle five. Those two are equal. So the reason over here is going to be substitution. Oops. Right? The reason I could do that is substitution. I substituted one, uh, five for one. Now, what do you see? And then we're done, right? You guys all see it? Now, what do you see? Yeah, you guys all see it. I see it. Yeah, you see the repeated five. So therefore, measure of angle three is equal to measure of angle six, which means that they're congruent. So I'm gonna write these last two steps. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to practice writing the, the terms down here just so that you're getting better and better at it, okay?